Rockets allow us to play among the stars, or at least within our own solar system. But if it wasn't for this little rocket, we'd be playing only around Earth. One of the things we figured out early in the space game is that we weren't going to get far from Earth on a single rocket. It would be too big, too heavy for a long journey. So we came up with the concept of using multiple rockets on a single journey. In 1903, Russian rocket scientist Konstantin Tarkovsky published a paper on the development of a multi-stage rocket. These types of rockets are now used in just about every launch today. The Saturn V rocket that was used to send men to the moon in fact had four stages if you count the service module. And two of those stages had dedicated Olive rockets attached to their sides. They are right here. Yep, they're real small compared to the rest of the rocket and produce relatively very little thrust. The end result is that they gave Saturn V very little acceleration, which begs the question, What's the point of having them? Something ain't right. The moon on the average is 384,000 kilometers from Earth, and it took Apollo 11 about three days to get there. To go that kind of distance without current technology requires a multi-stage rocket for sure. Putting a rocket on top of another rocket may not be a big deal. But what's a very big deal is separating the spent stages from the rest of the rocket safely and then reliably lighting the next stage while the rocket is moving at about 10,000 kilometers per hour. Now, before the stage can separate, it must be turned off. This is not an issue since stages are only separated when they run out of fuel. But the key thing to note is that the rocket is no longer accelerating. And since at this stage of the flight, it's in a microgravity environment due to its high horizontal velocity, everything inside the rocket will start to float, including the fuel. Now we have a serious issue. The fuel floating around the tank is not a problem in and of itself. It becomes one when you light up the rocket engine that it's feeding. See, because the fuel is floating around in globs, drops, and droplets, as the engine takes in fuel, it will at some point take in an air pocket, a region with little or no fuel. When this happens, the engine will stall or at the very least provide lower thrust. Either of these conditions will mess up the carefully planned trajectory of the rocket, which more than likely will lead to a failure of the mission. To give you a better handle on this situation, think of what happens when a leaf blower is low on fuel. As you move the blower around, the fuel will splash around in the tank and at certain times there will be no fuel at the intake pipe, so the engine will sputter or even cut off even though there's still a good amount of fuel. This is where the Olich rocket, or better yet, the Olich motor saves the day. The principle is very simple. Apply a small amount of acceleration in the opposite direction of the location of the main engine. This will force the fuel to be pushed to the bottom of the tank, ensuring that there are no pockets of air at the fuel intake. The Olich motor provides just enough acceleration to do this. So once all or most of the fuel have been pushed to the bottom of the tank because of this acceleration, the main rocket engine will fire and provide the acceleration required to keep the fuel at the bottom of the tank while it's on. While the Olich engines on the Saturn V are relatively small, they ain't no joke. Look at how tall they are. On a gigantic rocket like the Saturn V, everything is big. Just look at the rocket nozzle. Or the escape tower. Uh, okay. Back to the subject at hand. In the early days of spaceflight, restarting a liquid fuel rocket in space was, and to some extent, is still a tricky thing to do. This Olish maneuver has to still be performed before you can reignite your engine in space. Here are a few examples of Olish motors attached to the parent rocket. Now it all makes sense. The purpose of the Olish motor is not to propel a spacecraft forward. Instead, its purpose is to force floating fuel inside the fuel tank to the bottom. This ensures that the main engine has adequate amount of fuel even when the spacecraft is in a low-G environment. 
In some spacecraft, the maneuvering engines are used to perform the Alish maneuver. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more spacecraft related videos on something ain't right. This is the second one, and it's out of this world. Yeah, I had to say that.